What's up, everybody? What's going on? I hope all of y'all are doing fan freaking tastic out there. I know why I am, because tonight is WWE Backlash 2020, and allegedly, this particular card is going to contain the greatest wrestling match ever. 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 And when you have a title like that, when you have a title like that on the card with you, then there's a chance that you have a lot to live up to. And not, I'm not just talking about the people in the match itself. I'm talking about the rest of the superstars on the card as well. The way they better be thinking is this. They think that Edge and Randy Orton can have the greatest wrestling match ever? Well look, we're sharing a card with those two. We're sharing the same show with those two. So let's go out there, put our best foot forward to prove management wrong. I I'll give you an example, okay? WrestleMania 3, it was Andre the Giant versus Hulk Hogan. That was the match that had the most hype around it. It was being called the unstoppable force, meaning the immovable object, right? Even though that match had the most hype around it, Real legit wrestling fans remember that being the night of Randy Savage versus Ricky Steamboat. That match was incredible, and dare I say, that match was greater than Andre versus Hogan. And another example, back in the Attitude Era, right? One thing that made the Attitude Era, especially in WWF, so great compared to WCW at that time was that everybody on the show was trying to outdo each other. So, what some of these superstars better be doing tonight is like, after their match, once they go back through that curtain, they say, yeah, try to follow that. So yeah, to all the superstars that won't be in what I assume the main event tonight, good luck. Good luck, you're gonna need it. You have a lot of expectation to live up to and you have a lot to try and outdo. Good luck you're gonna need it. So let's go into the matches, okay? First up, we got the Women's Tag Team Championships getting defended in a triple threat tag team match. Bailey and Sasha defend their titles against the team of Asuka and Charlotte and then the Iconics. So it's already confusing enough when WWE has double champions. So do I want Bailey and Sasha Banks to retain the titles? No. Bailey's already got her United States Championship. I, I don't want to see this ring last any longer. Alright. Asuka and Charlotte. Asuka's already the Raw Women's Champion. And she's going to be in the uh, same match later on. Alright. And next we got the Iconics. Now, I don't know what it is about the Iconics, but... Since I saw them have that promo with Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross a few weeks ago, I think my opinion of them started to change. I'm not quite sure what it is, but there's like... Mm, something about the Iconics have changed, and I'm, I'm kind of liking it. So, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but... Let's let the Iconics win this match. Okay? Alright, now, Asuka is going to be uh, running double duty tonight. <laughs> duty as she defends a Raw Women's Championship against Nia Jax. Look, Charlotte beat Asuka this past Monday on Raw, and we already know that that's going to lead to her having yet another title shot, and possibly another title reign coming soon. So, we got we got to go ahead and call it what it is. Asuka's winning this match just so she can take it to Charlotte. Uh, I mean, the only way that I can see this getting prevented is if somehow or another Nia Jax wins the belt. But I think that's going to come with a lot of heat because Nia Jax was injuring Kyrie Sane a lot, and Nia she's just being called an unsafe worker. So whatever the result, let's just hope it doesn't come out with Charlotte being champion again. Alright, next up is uh, Sheamus taking on Jeff Hardy. If Sheamus actually wins this match, I'm going to be surprised. 
But then again, Jeff Hardy did beat um, Sheamus in that Intercontinental Championship tournament. So who knows? Maybe just to last, just to make the rivalry last a little bit longer. Let's go ahead and let Sheamus pick up the W in this match. I, I, I sense that this feud is still pretty fresh and it's not over yet. Alright, next up, the United States Championship is on the line as Apollo Crews defends against Andrade. Look, Andrade just lost that belt to Apollo. If Apollo was to lose that belt again, it would have been a waste of rain. And it just would have been a waste of time. So, Apollo, he needs to keep holding on to that belt for as long as possible at this point. It took him so long to get it, I want to see Apollo have a long reign with this belt. Our next up, the Universal Championship is on the line in a handicap match as Braun Strowman defends against The Miz and John Morrison. I'm getting flashbacks to him having the Intercontinental title and having to defend against Shinsuke, Sammy, and Cesaro. But it's still two compared to three. And plus, I'm still waiting for The Fiend and Braun to go at it. Boy, he's been kind of quiet as of late, so I wouldn't be surprised if somehow or another Bray pops his head around for this, you know? But do I see Miz and John Morrison taking the belt? No, I don't. A and I hope I don't see it. Alright, next, the uh, WWE Championship is on the line as Drew McIntyre defends against Bobby Lashley. I'm getting flashbacks to TNA 2016, Drew Galloway, and Lashley. So, and I know we got MVP right there at ringside with Bobby Lashley, and right now, Lana and MVP, they're kind of in an issue as well. I won't be surprised if Lana ends up becoming the, um, the reason Lashley loses somehow. Then again, I, I, I would hate it if Drew was to lose the belt tonight. I remember Bobby Lashley saying multiple times he wants to face Brock Lesnar. And I think the only way to get Brock Lesnar back in WWE is if it is through a title picture. And right now, this is just looking way too perfect. Brock Lesnar has Paul Heyman. Bobby Lashley has MVP. And I remember that little scene at the Royal Rumble where MVP started slightly chasing Paul Heyman at ringside. So, the... If Lashley becomes champion, this better lead to a Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar match. BL versus BL. Let's make it happen. And if that can't happen, then fine. Go ahead. Let Drew McIntyre win it. Alright, next up is the alleged greatest wrestling match ever. As Randy Orton takes on Edge. Now... The fan in me wants to see Edge win this. But the bigger fan in me, and the intellectual in me, wants this rivalry to last just a little bit longer. Because we, we gotta call it what it is. COVID-19 sucks, and it's taking a lot of stuff away from pro wrestling. The biggest thing being the normal, regular audience in the arenas. Right? And I'm pretty sure Edge wants to have that feeling of the big crowd on his side again. And right now, I'm hearing lots of speculation that somehow or another, SummerSlam is going to be the first show where the WWE audience gets back to normal where they should be. So, if I expect a third rubber match to happen, then... Somehow or another, I want Randy Orton to win this match. That way we can set up for yet a third match at SummerSlam. And maybe that would undersell the greatest wrestling match ever. But, like, like I said, these two have a big, big, big obstacle in front of them. They, they, they need to really try their best to actually 
prove that this isn't just hype, that this is going to be true. So, I hope some of you feel as if this match is going to be the greatest wrestling match ever. And maybe the, even the greatest show ever. That's what the theme song is promoting from Panic at the Disco. But yeah, I hope all of you enjoyed the show tonight. And I hope all the superstars can put their best foot forward tonight as well. And until next time, make sure all of you remember to be outrageously optimistic year-round. Booyah! I'm out.